So, you probably guess what we're going to be talking about today. No, not the history of Henry Fillmore. We're going to be talking about double tonguing. And uh, this is a March uh, Rolling Thunder that we play uh, at work all the time. Um, so much that I often don't sit down and practice it as much as I should. Um, and if you'll notice, I've got some alternate position things I like to do on there. There's some really tough, this actually, uh, Circus March actually lays really well on the trombone. It's not terribly hard once you, once you have a good double tongue. Um, the trick is to play it in time. And I suspect if I listen back to what I just played, I'm, I'm late off of some of the uh, tied long notes, which is very common in this uh, excerpt. Um, so, today, let's talk about double tonguing. When I auditioned for the Marine Band back in, well, for the, the 1999, it was years ago, um, I had just gotten out of Juilliard, um, had a lot of skills on the trombone, but one of the things I was still very bad at was double tonguing. And, um, no one's fault other than my own. I had never uh, really spent a lot of time on it. I had played uh, Arthur Pryor solos, yet I had always played them at a tempo that allowed me to single tongue the fast variations. I never really took the challenge of trying to double tongue them. I was scared and it didn't sound good. So when I got ready to take the Marine Band audition, there was a uh, circus march on the list of excerpts called Onward Upward. It's a great circus march. Uh, I've played it a number of times in the band. We don't play it a whole lot these days, but it's a great march. Um, very hard. I had to really, really work on it. And um, I had to figure out a way to kind of develop my double tonguing skill because um, it was, like I said, it was pretty deficient. So um, as I often do in my life, I went to my dad, who's a trombone player. I said, Dad, what should I do with this? I don't know what to do. And so he gave me a great method uh, to work on double tonguing that I'm going to show you here now. So one of the first things with your double tongue practice is um, developing, it in a, developing it slowly, being able to tongue slowly. Um, this is a technique my dad uh, taught me. And my dad, for those of you who don't know, is Jimmy Clark. He uh, teaches at Texas A&M University Commerce and plays principal trombone in the Dallas Opera, Dallas Winds. Um, so I'm kind of giving away a bit of a family secret here. Uh, sorry, Pop. Uh, hope you don't mind. Um, but it's, it's very helpful. And um, so as I said, we start out real slow. The thing with double tonguing, when you're not very good at it, even when you are pretty good at it, doing it really slow sounds terrible. But you just have to keep at it. So it sounds kind of like this when I start. So what I'm going for is just clarity. I want to hear the articulation clean without a lot of junk in it. Now, when you start, it may sound kind of messy, kind of like this. I'm actually tonguing much harder than I was the first time. You have a comment too? It's my cat. I have a practice cat. And she likes to hang out in here and comment on what I do. So don't worry. If you don't like my videos, I have a critic right here constantly telling me what, what, what's not good. So rest assured. Um, anyway, back to the double tonguing. Um, 
working on it slow really develops the the muscle memory for your tongue to be able to make that ka syllable in a clear way. Um, and like I said at the beginning, it may feel very um, thuddy, very heavy. That's okay. You just need to keep at it. So take take this exercise like I'm doing. This is very boring practice. Uh, one of my colleagues at work, um, the principal trombone player in the Marine Band, Sam Barlow, has a great saying, which I love. He said, you know, I'm a real blue collar player about a lot of things. And if anything is blue collar practicing, it's this double tongue practicing. So you take one note and what I do, what my dad suggested was just double tongue one note until you run out of air like this. And what it does is it, it makes your tongue tired. So we're developing a new skill that is essentially a physical muscular skill. You have to build up the endurance to be able to do it for longer periods of time. The other thing you'll notice as this as you get better at this is the heaviness kind of tends to go away and you're able to use air and a lighter double tongue. And I'm using more there, less of a TK and more of a DG. I try to use a very light double tongue. So that's one way. Uh, let me show you another way I like to practice. Um, another option is to use a practice mute. And I just have one of these best brass uh, here. Uh, it works well, Dennis Wick, whatever you have. Um, the resistance of the practice mute, it really just helps you to uh, have to tongue uh, more clearly in the beginning when you're learning. So it's a great learning aid for that. A um, Kind of a uh, another thing that's that's good is that uh, I, I can't believe I'm going to say this on a video that young players may watch, but in this case, it's okay. Uh, you can put the practice mute in, and you can turn the TV on, and you can do this ad nauseum while you learn how to do it. Pro tip. So I take the practice mute. I'm doing just what I did before with one note. <laughs> So again, it's just another option for practicing your double tonguing. The very simple practicing is what makes the clarity. Then you can move on to um, Arbin. Uh, the Vining daily routine has some good double tongue exercises and prior solos, cornet solos, that kind of stuff. Okay, so now that you've done hours and hours of the slow double tongue practicing with and without a practice mute, um, and as you start to get better at that skill, now it's time to go to Arbin and some other things and start to actually apply this. Um, it's great to be able to do it on one note, then you need to start being able to double tongue and change notes on the trombone, which is, which is pretty difficult. So the first place I start, um, the double tonguing section of the Arbin book, which if you have the Alessi Bowman edition, which I think everyone should buy if you're going to buy an Arbin book these days. Starts on page 197. And um, I'm going to actually play exercise 80. Um, so this is a good one for me, just in a warm up kind of situation and where I'm maintaining my double tonguing skill. <laughs> And a lot of 
lot of times I'll just play right down the page. So now I'll go to 81. And you hear a little bit of that um, kind of doesn't sound great when I get up high. Um, for me, I have to really work hard once I get above high F or middle F, whatever you want to call it, um, in that register. So for me, a lot of my single note double tongue practices is higher. It's just harder for me to do that so I really have to work on that a lot um, the other thing with the double tongue practice is it's a lot harder on a bigger bigger horn bigger mouthpiece bigger instrument this is a Bach 42 and a 5g uh, to me it's great to learn it on this however it can be helpful to practice on a smaller instrument if you have access to one um, it helps you keep from feeling like you're beating your head against the wall all the time so I'll play through a lot of these um, Arbin exercises, and especially until I get to the ones where we're changing notes. So great. I see something I need to work on there. Um, now I can go to something like Rolling Thunder and apply the same principles to that. So you notice I'm still playing this stuff slow. Um, to me, it's, it's a lot harder to play it slow. The other reason for that is a lot of times you'll get into an ensemble setting where the director will kick one of these marches off and frankly, once you know them, they're a lot easier at a fast tempo. It's really hard to play Rolling Thunder, uh, what we call, a lot of times brass players call it, you know, in the crack, uh, meaning it's right in that spot between your double tonguing and your single tonguing. It's a little too fast to single tongue, it's a little too slow to double tongue. So, you know, you can work on getting your single tongue faster, you can also work on getting your double tongue slower, which is very helpful. Um, so Rolling Thunder is a good example. The first two measures of this are always really hard to me. And the other thing slowing it down does is it makes, uh, helps make certain you're playing the notes in the right position, that it's in tune. Um, again, not quite as critical when it's fast, but when you're trying to play with the other trombone players, the euphonium players, the tuba players, as one ensemble, pitch becomes uh, much more critical. So again, this is my approach to blue collar double tongue development. Uh, I really hope this helps you out. Uh, I'd love to hear from you in the comments if you have other ways you like to practice, or if you have questions about anything I uh, said today. Um, it's pretty simple. Just pick a note and double tongue slow until you can do it clearly. That's the basic concept. Then apply that at speed to your etudes and uh, any solos or uh, marches or excerpts you might be working on. Thanks a lot for listening today. Um, this was kind of a long uh, vlog, but I wanted to really be somewhat thorough in covering this topic. Um, one thing I didn't cover was the very basics of how to make a double tongue articulation with the T and K syllable. Um, maybe I'll do another short video on that. If you, if you would like to hear that, please put that in the comments. Um, thanks for joining me here. You can find me on YouTube, Facebook at Virtual Trombonist, um, Periscope. I do a little bit of Periscope stuff lately uh, under the handle Virtual TRB, and Instagram is Virtual Trombonist. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, if you haven't been to my website, head over, sign up for my email list, 
I've got a lot of other videos, teaching aids, um, and stuff on there that's uh, kind of fun. So um, I look forward to seeing you in the comments and look forward to uh, having you back as a listener and a reader. Thanks very much for your time. Take care.